Okay, so welcome back everybody for the last session of our conference this morning. Um, and we've left this to last for a reason. We are welcoming our colleagues now from both Australia and the United States. So it gives me great pleasure to, oh, excuse me one second, uh, to welcome Catherine Forrester and Dr. Haley Blackburn. Catherine Forrester is a pharmacist, pharmacist and lecturer at Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. She has a background in hospital clinical practice and HIV ambulatory care and coordinates a postgraduate infectious diseases pharmacotherapy unit at the Monash University Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. Dr. Haley Blackburn is an assistant professor of pharmacy practice at the University of Montana Skagg School of Pharmacy and is passionate about her roles in interprofessional education and experiential learning in global and planet health. Haley co-founded the Rx for Climate platform to promote sustainability in education around the world. She has achieved ethics approval to run a national survey on embedding sustainability in undergraduate and postgraduate pharmacy education. This session will provide an overview of a pilot effort to create an international virtual exchange, also known as a collaborative online international learning program focused on planetary health topics for pharmacy students and students from other health professions. This exchange was conducted between the University of Montana Skagg School of Pharmacy in Missoula, USA and Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. So Catherine, thank you for giving up your evening and Haley, thank you for, I think, getting up extremely early to join us. <laughs> thank you so much. We are very excited to be here. Um, Catherine and I are very enthusiastic about uh, being able to present some of our work over the last year on this international planetary health education effort. So um, as, as we said in this introduction, um, this presentation will just go through an overview of our international virtual exchange for education and planetary health. Um, first up, we'll provide and just a general outline of our presentation. So we'll give you a general overview of virtual exchange and what that is and our planetary health education framework that we used as our approach. Um, we'll describe our course development and the structure of the course. We'll talk about the associated learning domains and activities that went along with those, uh, the results from student reflections and surveys. And then finally, we'll discuss our lessons learned to pass along for anyone who might be interested in replicating something like this in their own teaching. So let's start by just discussing what we mean by virtual exchange. So this is also known as COIL or Collaborative Online International Learning. And this is really a growing model for international education. We often think about online learning opportunities as potentially being a virtual webinar or a set of asynchronous lectures or discussion boards in an online course platform. But as the name would imply here, COIL uh, is focused on collaborative learning and relationship building through synchronous group meetings over video conferencing platforms, really focused on interactive discussion, sustained collaboration on project work over a longer period of time to allow for relationship building, uh, really engaging in cross-cultural exchange, social learning, um, and work between learners in different countries. And so this model works really well to foster critical thinking, global awareness, and development of an identity as a global citizen. And while some of this movement has taken off during COVID-19, uh, when travel and study abroad opportunities were limited, we have a number of other benefits to this model that we've seen, and, and it will be a great model to continue going forward. It's a cost-effective way to allow learners to interact with people from other countries. And because it doesn't require travel and the associated expenses, it can also promote equity and inclusion for those who might not otherwise be able to travel due to financial constraints or other personal circumstances. And because there's so much collaborative work happening online, uh, it also has the benefit of promoting some digital literacy. Students are able to familiarize themselves with the tools and platforms needed to effectively collaborate on, around the globe, and that can be a really valuable skill set to develop going forward. So 
So you've just heard about the Planetary Health Report card. Thank you, Ashley and Ellie, uh, very nice work. Um, but we just want to review the approach or the framework that we used in the design of this experience. So planetary health as an emerging field looks not only at the consequences of environmental harms to human health and the importance of sustainable practices to avoid exceeding our planetary boundaries, but it also looks more deeply at the multifaceted ways our so social, political, cultural structures influence the outcomes, influence the health of humans, the health of natural systems on a local, regional, and global scale. And there's published, uh, there's actually a published planetary health education framework um, that has four broad domains defined, all centered around the interconnection of humans and uh, natural systems. And so the first on the top left there is the Anthropocene and health. Uh, covering foundational knowledge of human-driven global environmental change and its connections to human health and the health of natural systems. Then there is systems thinking and complexity, really getting into looking at connections across local, regional, and global scales. Uh, equity and social justice as a core, um, exploring the socioeconomic, cultural, political, and environmental conditions that connect and influence these systems. And then finally, a focus on movement building and systems change. This planetary health education framework is really solutions oriented, really encourages a very interdisciplinary approach and, and is focused on action rather than just gaining knowledge. And we felt like COIL or this virtual exchange would be a really nice model for exploring these topics in a really interactive and engaging way. As we're evaluating our approach, um, to course design, we found that Australia and the United States have a really nice balance of similarities and differences across planetary health domains, and that allowed us to engage with these topics, think about how we are connected on a global scale, and that global connection and interactive nature of COIL made for such a more rich uh, experience than just a lecture-based course when exploring these topics. So in the spirit of that planetary health focus on interdisciplinary approach, Catherine and I teamed up with my colleague at the University of Montana, Peter McDonough, who is the director of the Climate Change Studies Program here. Um, and we worked together to create this experience using his expertise, coming completely outside of pharmacy to add an additional lens to the topics we were teaching. And this was incredibly valuable. Um, not only for his expertise, but also as a way for us to model for st students as well what a non-traditional partnership to work on these issues might look like, and to encourage our students to think more broadly about what the term interdisciplinary or interprofessional means. So this is not just nurses and doctors and physical therapists or other health professionals in a healthcare setting, but this should really be looking outside of that sphere um, to others with completely different backgrounds in the community outside of healthcare to work on solutions together. The locations of our institutions are on the screen there with the blue stars marked. Um, and actually Melbourne and Montana have similar issues with wildfire smoke, extreme heat, drought, uh, potential impact of food systems, and yet the different mediators or influences that might change the way that pharmacists or other health professionals are able to respond. And so this really allowed for us to get into very interesting discussion and student engagement. The students that we recruited for participation were a mix, um, but they all came from some focus on health or health professions in their training. And we had roughly equal numbers of students from each institution. So as you can see here, um, there was a mix in the field of study um, at the University of Montana, pharmacy, master's in public health and microbiology, whereas Von Ash was specifically pharmacy students. Um, Roughly half of our students had participated in some form of international exchange or experience in the past, and that had included everything from a short trip to an entire year's study abroad experience. Three of our UM students had prior exposure to planetary health topics from their participation in an elective course that I coordinated in 2020. Uh, but the majority of students came to this without a great deal of foundational knowledge. And I think we found while the background knowledge was helpful for students, 
it was not necessary. Students don't need a wealth of foundational knowledge to come to the table and participate meaningfully in this type of experience. So we be began planning our course in summer 2021, and it did take a bit to coordinate between institutions, recruit students, determine our schedules, and find a structure that was going to work for everyone for the spring 2022 course. And um, while uh, UM students had to take the course for academic credit with a grade on their trans transcript, Monash students were actually able to take it um, participating as an elective outside of coursework and earned a certificate of completion. Certainly benefits um, and drawbacks between those two models for students, but we found that either one worked well. Um, ultimately, we landed on this eight week period of time from February through April, 2022 with an alternating structure of two hour synchronous meetings every other week with asynchronous meetings or excuse me asynchronous assignments readings lectures group project work in between each meeting and as you can see on the far right there that arrow is indicating that we um, also had this longitudinal project that occurred throughout all of the meetings where we set it up at the very beginning and that was really a central piece of the coil experience for students we also explain, planned this structure so there were easier topics and easier icebreaker up front in the earlier meetings, and then we built toward maybe more complex topics that required deeper thought and discussion that might be easier to engage with once students were a little bit more comfortable with each other. Um, ultimately, all of this was structured. We were trying to be very mindful of the progression of not only the topics, but the way that students could ultimately build on their relationship, develop rapport as they were collaborating, um, going, going throughout the experience. So our five domains, uh, learning domains for this virtual exchange are listed on the slide and they're modeled after the Fink taxonomy of significant learning merged with the planetary health uh, education priority topics or principles. And we like this approach because the domains focus so heavily on application, integration, and really fostering habits of mind or practices that students can carry forward with them. It was most important for us to not overwhelm students with uh, heaps of information and instead to focus on application and leaving students with a sense of agency in their own self-directed learning and engagement with these issues as really the things develop knowledge is rapidly growing um, and we really want to encourage action rather than paralysis in terms of all of the information that people receive um, so Catherine will go into more detail about our assignments projects and student reflections as they relate to these domains later on. So I'll start with talking about the project. So thanks Haley for describing um, how this is really a key part of the COIL approach. So an opportunity for students to work together over the length of the course um, on a project which continued outside of the live class times. So this slide shows how we planned for the projects to run over the length of the course. And the idea was that each week students could use what they learned um, in terms of the planetary health domains to then help them take the next step with developing their project. So in the first meeting, we divided students into smaller teams, four or five students per team, and then we allocated them one of these topics. So we chose air quality, extreme heat and food systems. As Hayley mentioned, these were all quite relevant to both of our locations. And also we thought that they would allow each team to explore some quite unique issues. Um, of course, there were areas of overlap due to the nature of these complex systems. So then the students started by researching their topics and how they compared and contrasted in each place um, and started to draw out systems maps that they could build on over time. So looking at human health, social, political, geographical and environmental factors and drawing connections and feedback loops between them all. Um, then they moved on to look more explicitly at any equity issues within the systems that they started drawing and then any leverage points where actions could have a positive impact. 
And so by this point, they were starting to focus in on a specific objective for their project and to think about what expertise they would need to help them develop a plan and who they should involve. Um, then they used power mapping as an approach to um, thinking about all of the possible people, groups and organisations who might be impacted and might need to be involved in decision making um, and who might have the power to support or stand in the way of them achieving their objective. And then finally, in the last session, they presented their final ideas and action plans with a concrete first step um, and any co-benefits that they expected to achieve. So I'll come back to speak a bit more about the projects later when we look at the lessons that we learned about COIL or the virtual exchange and changes that we'd like to make the next time. If we look at the activities overall. As Haley mentioned, each fortnight, we looked at one of the planetary health domains. Um, so we used a combination of asynchronous materials and then in-class activities to help the students develop um, these skills and this understanding that they could then apply to developing their project plans in and out of class. So the online asynchronous materials included some recorded lectures and some readings um, with related tasks that students were asked to do to prepare for the class. So this is an example um, of our first meeting with the in-class activities. Um, because this was the first meeting, as Haley mentioned at the start, we made the activities quite accessible and allowed plenty of time for the students to get to know each other and used activities that didn't require much foundational knowledge of planetary health concepts to begin with, but helped to build it. Um, and so we started with some stereotype busting activities um, to help with ice breaking and to help with some cultural awareness reflection. And then students had a chance to talk about the aspects of environmental change and health that they were the most interested in discussing. So there was plenty of material for comparing and contrasting in terms of those impacts and also the differences between local health systems was quite a big focus. These are some of the other activities that we used in the subsequent meetings. Um, so going anti-clockwise from the top left, these each related to one of the planetary health domains. So we looked at a case study of a community project from Indonesia to help explore health from different perspectives and to help, again, build foundational knowledge of the Anthropocene and health um, and of interconnections with nature. Then to explore equity and social justice, students read about an Indigenous people's approach to climate justice um, and also an article about Aboriginal people's experiences of bushfires. And so that led into a class discussion about settler colonialism and structural inequalities and, again, um, similarities and differences in the places that we both are. Then looking at systems change um, to help us compare and contrast top-down and bottom-up approaches, we gave students a topic to debate and compare the pros and cons of, in this case, government-mandated Fiji hammock naps um, using the concept of napping for climate justice, um, which you could look up on the side, um, versus a bottom-up grassroots or personal responsibility approach. Um, so who would benefit, who would miss out, and so on. Um, and then finally, we introduced power mapping, um, and in this case, using an example um, of Lord of the Rings, which has some questionable, controversial positioning of some key players, with apologies to Dr. Blackburn. Um, so we have, we obtained ethics approval to evaluate our pilot course. Um, and so we used an anonymous end of course survey and analysis of some written reflections from students. And so here are just some of the results from the survey. We had 12 of 14 students respond. So as Haley mentioned, from the outset, we were um, quite concerned to make sure that the course didn't lead to a sense of overwhelm or too much doom and gloom and that students did come away with a sense of agency. Um, and so it was reassuring to see that all students who responded were more interested in taking action after completing the course. So this is in taking action to address issues related to climate change and environmental harms. 
um, as well as to mitigate environmental harms to human health. And overall, um, the overall course experience was positive for 11 of the 12 respondents, but one found the experience somewhat negative. And from responses to open-ended questions, it was apparent that the group project and the logistics of that um, was a factor in the more neg negative experience. So we'll talk again more about that later in what we would do differently. And here are some quotes from student reflections. Um, and we're just presenting them as they relate to each of the learning domains that Haley described earlier. So in terms of foundational knowledge of planetary health, here you can see students describing links between social and environmental determinants of health and the health of ecosystems um, and reflecting on First Nations understanding of these interconnections and the impacts of colonialism. I'll allow a little bit more time, but you know, I'm sure you can uh, read offline as well later to do this justice. There were some really great reflections. Um, looking at application, students were comparing health systems in the two countries and environmental issues in their regions. And you can see that they were focused on solutions that they could implement practically in their roles in particular. Here we can see students using systems thinking approaches um, and explaining that well-designed solutions targeted at appropriate leverage points can have co-benefits. Moving to the human dimension, students showed that they understand that solutions can fail or lead to unintended negative impacts when important perspectives are overlooked and people aren't included in decision making. Um, and then this second student describes how seeing what their international colleagues were doing made them think differently about their own local issue. And then finally, um, students showed that they're thinking about how to carry this learning forward into their own professional development. Um, so here describing the interplay between planetary health and global health or population health. And then also as a pharmacy student describing what they can do as a health professional. And I mentioned our concern about avoiding overwhelm. Another one was we were offering this virtual exchange, but would it really feel like an exchange for people who'd already spent two years on Zoom? And so we were very happy to see this reflection from a student who had previously studied abroad. And speaking for myself, I also experienced this refreshed feeling um, after sessions where students really had some great discussions and in inspired us with their discussions and their insights. So this was it's quite a good one to come back to. <laughs> so here are some of the things that we found most valuable about the experience um, and some of the things that we would do differently next time. So the key thing we would change is that we found and heard back from students that we did use too much class time asking groups to present their progress with their projects. So the intention was that if they shared some quick updates in each meeting, then the groups would learn from each other, learn more about the other issues. And we could also provide feedback to help them get to a practical first step by the end of the course. But doing it via in-class presentations just wasn't ideal for either of those purposes because it took time away from other activities. So in future, we could ask for teams to submit their work offline and offer feedback away from the live classes and then maybe allow time for one midpoint update um, in a shorter format. 
flexibility. Um, I was very lucky to be invited to join this collaboration with Haley and Peter. Um, it was a great um, interdisciplinary collaborative experience and being able to meet in between. Um, of course, having a plan um, that was well designed was really important, but it was equally important to be able to change it on the run um, when needed. Um, the COIL model, as Haley mentioned, is really accessible. Um, and that's for both students and educators, as long as the time difference and other logistics work out. There are lots of support materials available online as well. And it's really an ideal model to adapt for teaching of lots of topics, but particularly sustainability. Um, it's relatively sustainable itself in many ways, but it's also just a fantastic way for people to share and compare local systems, challenges, ideas. Um, and it uses a very solutions focused approach, ideally with projects that lead directly onto practical actions that students can continue with beyond the course. So, if you're interested in giving the COIL approach a try um, or connecting with other pharmacists around the world who are interested in planetary health and sustainability beyond the amazing group that's here today, um, please reach out to us, but please also feel free to jump on to RX for Climate. So you've heard from um, another co-founder before Ashley and Haley and I are also co-founders of RX for Climate, which is really just a place for us all to connect and find each other. Um, so it can lead to projects like this one. It's a community of practice designed for sharing ideas. Um, so yeah, please sign on up. Um, we're happy to talk further about our experience and to share any materials um, at any time as well. Um, and as a next step, we're hoping to run another virtual exchange um, and open it up to include some practicing pharmacists um, to help with project implementation as well. And the full results of our evaluation will be on the way. But thank you. It's been great to hear from all the other speakers. And um, yeah, looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much, Catherine and Haley. That was really, really interesting. So just there was so much to learn about there, and, and you've obviously got a lot of learning from the process. Um, so did you say that you're going to be publishing an analysis of your piece of work? Where can we sort of access that? And is that coming or is it out there somewhere now? No pressure. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we are hoping to publish. We are probably spending more time on planning the next um, iteration. So we're using what we have analysed so far to kind of inform our design of, of next year's offering. Um, but we are hoping over the next little while, <laughs> I'm going to be completely non-committal, um, to, yes, to complete a more in-depth analysis and, um, and hopefully publish, but we'd be happy to share. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just thinking of people in the audience who might be interested in doing something similar at their schools of pharmacy, but you've just put um, emails addresses in the last slide. Again, if you could maybe pop those in the chat box at the end, that would be great. And then people sort of, sort of get in touch and share. So, so one question I had for you both, um, I think it was Hayley that mentioned early on that you said the pharmacy students didn't need sort of expertise to come to the table and have useful engagement. Um, early on. What about um, the staff? So the, the staff in the pharmacy schools, was there any challenge there in terms of them not feeling they had the knowledge to kind of undertake this work? Do you, so, so we really, um, I, it was really just, just the three of us, just Catherine, Peter and I, who, who were the um, the ones running the course. And so it relied less on other colleagues who were maybe, um, you know, 
with less background uh, in the in the um, topics. And it was great to have Peter as a as a content expert resource in, in terms of it being very centered in climate change. Um, so I think that all worked just fine. And I think that the um, students not coming in with background knowledge uh, in some ways, I think was, I could almost say, I, I don't know if I want to say benefit, but potentially a, a, a means to force students into a situation where they had to direct their own learning. Um, and you know, so I think that it was, it was maybe kind of advantageous in that way um, that if if students came in feeling like, oh, wow, we've, we have this wealth of background information and foundational knowledge, they may have felt less motivated to do more research on their own. So I think that maybe, maybe that was something to take away there. Yeah. And I mean, the experience of the students seemed to be overwhelmingly positive. Was there any sort of, um, I know certainly for myself, when I go to look things up, it's easy to just get overwhelmed with the amount of knowledge out there and find yourself down rabbit holes. And two hours later, you've got 15 more questions. Tell me about that. Um, I think that that was our, our intention of having regular check-ins with the group projects to help guide some of their research. And I think that that was the, the tricky balance that we were trying to strike there in, uh, and that we maybe exceeded in, in having too much of our time in class dedicated to discussion of each individual group's project. Um, so Yes, I think I think that's a very good point um, to try to keep up some sort of guardrails for students as they're as they're doing their research. Um, Catherine, I don't know. Do you have anything to to add to that? Um, not so much to that, but I think on the previous point about um, the lack of prior prior knowledge or lack of confidence um, in expertise. So I certainly had. That was probably my main barrier with getting involved um, because Haley has previously delivered the um, human health and climate change elective, which you heard about in the planetary health report card. Um, and so I felt that I perhaps wasn't bringing expertise to the table to the same level, but I think that that was actually quite valuable to model for students that you do, we all need to step beyond our comfort zone and we don't all need to know everything we're working with others who do have that expertise um we all need to yeah work across disciplines transdisciplinary transdisciplinary approaches are what we need yeah. um and I suppose so I was lucky that this partnership was was with people with this experience but there are also a lot of existing materials online there are some um there's a global consortium which I think we can probably share the link after this is sort of um, a bank of resources that's being built um, and other places online as well. So I think a lot of that um, foundational knowledge you can provide, and then it's really just being able to facilitate the discussions between students. Um, that's where so much of the value comes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're all learning in this, aren't we? That's the thing, it's, 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 it's new knowledge, so we're, we're all learning. Okay, a few questions um, from the group. So Shmuel has asked about, what do you think the role of a developed public health system has in the approach of planetary health? So I think maybe meaning, um, what can a developed public health system do perhaps to promote planetary health? Probably a very large answer. Um, <laughs> um, well, I think there are a whole host of things from all the way from the top down to the bottom up and the middle out approaches that um, the health system is going to be part of, um, but it's going to be linked with others from, you know, policy grassroots I think using systems thinking that could be quite a, quite a big one. So we're, we're starting to, isn't it, to have a, to have yes, a whole yeah. systems approach that's in line with what we're after and I think possibly none of us have that anywhere near that yet yeah. <laughs> but I think yeah I mean all today 
um, you know, can we improve because we've talked about antimicrobial stewardship, we've talked about pharmaceutical waste, we've talked about there's such, it's just so vast, isn't it? Um, so I think perhaps Chanel is, is thinking um, aspirationally where we, where we all would like to be perhaps in a, a few short years time. <laughs> a bit of luck and again, that's the challenge with these group projects, they could go in so many directions and it's mm -hmm. just picking, and that applies to all of us, picking your one piece and doing that well and making sure that it interacts well with other things. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a really good point, isn't it? Because like we've said, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and there's potentially so much that you could do and get a bit swamped trying to do lots of things. But like you say, focusing on one thing and doing it well it is, is really important. Okay, and Roshan just saying, thank you both so much for sharing. Really thoughtful work, lots to think about. Okay, do we have any more questions? Let me just have a quick look in the chat box. Any more questions for Catherine and Haley? just before we finish up. Oh, and Haley's kindly put some more resources in the chat box there for everybody. Okay, thank you so much for that, Catherine and Haley. That was really, really interesting and really interested to hear where you go next. So you were talking about um, perhaps at the next stage involving um, practicing pharmacists. So where are you hoping to pull those from? Will that be kind of at your current geographical locations or are you spreading out? I know lots of people here would be putting their hands up to be involved in that. Currently at our locations, but okay. you know, watch this space. <laughs> so we're all now wanting to move either to the Northeast of England or <laughs> Melbourne, <laughs> Australia or America <laughs> to get involved. Well, we will look forward to hearing about the next stage of your work, hopefully at next year's conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so if anybody has any other questions, that is all of our speakers finished now. Do feel free to pop any final questions that you might have um, into the chat box so we can get those addressed for you um, if you like. Um, just to sort of go back over um, this morning's session, um, just a huge amount of topics covered and just such inspirational ideas and so much positivity going on there. Um, I think it's amazing. So I've been kind of making notes as we've gone along and I've seen there's been some sort of um, themes that have developed throughout. So going back to Barry Melia this morning, he kind of really brought home to us the impact that the climate crisis is having um, on future generations and on how they're feeling about the future and really highlighted the need for us all to take action. So he really encouraged us to take away one action point. So if you haven't written that down yet, please write down now the one thing that you're going to go away and do whatever that might be and he suggested thinking about our actions at a personal level at a community level and at a professional level so Dr Elaine Winkley then went on and showed us how by finding people with shared vision she was able to set up a whole multidisciplinary faculty of learning um, and she found that by networking just by talking to people and finding the people who were also passionate um, she was able, able to identify those people with shared aims um, and then go on to share best practice and learning and not reinventing the wheel. And again, that's a theme that's come up again and again. Everybody is really willing to share their work and share their learning um, because we don't want to be reinventing the wheel. Professor Angela Alexander showed us that we need to embed sustainability across the board in pharmacy education, um, and we just need to get on and do it. So she's encouraging students and educators to just do this from the bottom up, to just get those ideas and get them embedded into the curriculum. Um, our student Melissa Fletcher then very nicely demonstrated how to do this um, by illustrating that there's a learning need for both students and academics on the health impacts of climate change, but also by demonstrating how it's so easy to um, insert learning on sustainability into existing modules and existing learning material. Matthew Shaw, director of CPP, then illustrated how organizational change can take place. And um, he gave us lots of ideas on how we can implement small changes to make significant differences and also got us to think a bit bigger picture in terms of sort of how, how we um, use technology, use printing, how we go about our sort of day-to-day -day business. Kate Fletcher from the University of Reading described changes across her university where they have a really strong sustainability strategy at the University of Reading. Um, and she really demonstrated how when the university sort of works on accessing significant funding, then they can have a real impact um, across a state's level. But what I think was also interesting there was she showed how engaging staff and students using things like online competitions um, can actually be really effective in encouraging individual change. 
Ellie Self and Ashley Lamb um, gave us a really enlightening um, presentation on their method for assessing schools of pharmacy on their sustainability. Um, and they showed us lots of ways that we can link planetary health into their curriculum. Their tool provides a really comprehensive assessment of pharmacy schools on sustainability and is a great way of identifying actions that schools of pharmacy can start to take. So, so lots of learning from that and a real, really good lever there, I think, for schools of pharmacy to start to do things. Then finally, Catherine and Haley shared with us um, their really innovative virtual exchange. Um, again, finding students, finding their tribe across the globe and sharing best practice across country, countries and a really novel approach to encouraging learning on planetary health, um, which is obviously developed learning um, for Catherine and Haley as well as to how to sort of improve and develop that. So lots of key messages, I think, today, um, lots of inspirational ideas. I think for me, it's really about talking to people, finding your tribe, finding motivation and inspiration from like-minded people, taking one step and then the next and then the next. Um, I think as a, as a pharmacy profession and as pharmacy students and as educators, we need to just be constantly stopping and thinking and asking ourselves questions. How do we do this sustainably? How do we embed sustainability into our practice? and into our education. Um, and once we start to do that, it actually becomes very obvious. And once we're talking to like-minded people, we can build our ideas and share our ideas. I think we often hear that individual action is insufficient to make a difference, but I think lots of our speakers today have proved that very wrong and showed that actually individuals can make a huge difference and can inspire change and can inspire learning. So I think we should all really take inspiration from that. So as we close our session today, um, I would like to give a huge thanks to all of our speakers who have joined us um, from the UK, from America, from Australia. Thank you for giving your time and sharing your inspiration um, and sharing your time and your knowledge with us. Uh, we really, really appreciate that. Um, I would like to say huge thanks to Minna I from Pharmacy Declares, who has created this conference um, from nothing uh, last year and gone out and identified all these speakers um, and brought together um, the conference both last year and today. Um, it's a huge amount of work, but it is it is so inspirational and will share so much best practice and learning. I think it's just fantastic. Also, thanks to all of our facilitators who've helped us out today and have been working furiously in the background, making sure the tech is working properly. So Karen and Lucy and Michelle, thank you, thank you so much for helping us out with that. So as we close today, I'd really encourage all of you to take the knowledge from today, take whatever those little key light bulb moments were for you and go out and use it. We all have agency, we all have a voice. Um, as health professionals, we are trusted members of our local communities. For those of you who are still in training and education, you know what you're aspiring to and you have a voice within your universities and institutions as a student body. So do go back you know, and talk to your lecturers, talk to your educators, ask them what they're doing about embedding sustainability into education. Help them because you know they will very much accept that health. Um, it's really important that we are all educated and understand the health risks of the climate crisis. And we have a responsibility to ensure that those around us are educated too. Um, so hopefully from today, we have lots of positive actions to take forward from there. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, we will close down the conference now. Um, we are really looking forward to hearing about all your work on Twitter. Uh, I'm just going to share our final slide, which has our Pharmacy Declares um, contact details and the Pharmacy Declares website. Please do go to our website to find out more information. Do get in touch. It is an amazing group of people who do amazing things every day. Um, this session has been recorded and the video will be posted on the Pharmacy Declares website in a week or so uh, once Minna gets a chance to sort all that out. So again, thank you very much everybody for attending today.